D Lo 404, boxing and more. I'm gonna try to squeeze a quick one in this morning. I wanna say shout out to the LDBC. Welcome back to my repeat viewers and subscribers. I wanna say thank you for your subscription. Um, if you're new to the channel, I wanna say welcome to the channel. If you're liking the content, please like, share, comment, and subscribe as well. What I want to talk about is um, mandatories and the complications behind making fights when, you, when you're a champion with guys that aren't your mandatory. And I'm not going to take a whole bunch of time on this video. I'm going to make this pretty quick. You know, uh, of course, first thing that comes to my mind is, you know, Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder with these uh, failed negotiations failure to make the fight come to fruition and, and and I've stated several times you know in my opinion part of it is the um the offers the, the offers from the, the the quote unquote a side just aren't aren't offers that are going to get a fight of that magnitude made but I, I'll go ahead and say that when it comes to these mandatory challenges and these sanctioning by the obligations that Anthony Joshua has I understand you're you're a multiple title holder you are, you owe you owe titles for multiple sanctioning bodies I understand that AJ isn't the first or only and won't be the last title holder that has more than one belt and throughout history, guys that have had more than one title have found a way to make fights with either other titleists or other guys who the fans wanted them to fight or guys that they wanted to fight. Case in point, Terry Crawford came, became undisputed um, just last year at 140. Him becoming undisputed had zero to do with a tournament, which is... um kind of how Usyk, who also became undisputed, part of what helped him become undisputed was he was in a tournament where some of those titles were in that tournament. So that allowed him to become undisputed. That helped because the only way the guy could avoid fighting him was to get out of the tournament. And not saying we've never seen that before. I mean, we, we've seen guys in the, super, the original Super 6 tournament at Super Middleweight where guys were getting out of the tournament or getting um, kicked out of the tournament, whatever the case was because of injuries or whatever the case might have been, where sometimes the guys that started in the tournament don't finish the tournament. But that said, I want to talk about Alexander Usyk and the fact that Usyk has all four major sanctioning body belts. For those of you who don't know, that's the WBA, WBC, WBO, and IBF. Usyk has all of those titles. He's the only champion at Cruiserweight. I'm not sure if he has that IBO belt, but I don't count that IBO belt. So if somebody else has that IBO belt, then it's just a guy with a belt. Like I always say about that IBO belt, that belt carries no more weight, has no more value, no more prestige than the belt that I use to keep my pants up every day. Um, but that said, despite Usyk having all four of those titles, ha has anyone at any time heard anything about Usyk having a hard time making that fight with Tony Bellew because of his mandatory, or excuse me, his mandatory obligations, as Eddie Hearn says, and Anthony Joshua says, uh, Usyk has four titles, and he is co-promoted by Eddie Hearn. And somehow, he's able to make a fight with um, Tony Bellew with, with no issue whatsoever. Fight, I mean, I, I hadn't heard anything haggling over negotiations. I hadn't heard anything about this person don't deserve a split. None, none of that ridiculousness. Just, just, guy just flat out makes a, makes a um, fight, you know, promoter makes the fight with no issue. 
you know, it helps when the promoter promotes both guys, which is what Eddie Hearn wanted to do with Wilder. He wanted options on Wilder. He wanted to be out Wilder's promoter. Tried to sign Wilder multiple times. Well documented. But with Wilder not willing to do that, and, and I'll, I'll go on record to say, if you ask me why he wants to sign Wilder, because that, that's the best play for Matchroom. That way, Matchroom wins no matter which fighter wins. Same thing Pacquiao was doing. I mean, excuse me, Bob Arum was doing with Pacquiao for years. It, it was like everybody that fought Pacquiao, Bob Arum had some kind of options on. Even if you go 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 to his last, you know, official top rank fight with Jeff Horn, even at this late stage of Manny Pacquiao's career, Bob Arum had options on Jeff Horn. And and in his last last fight with Jeff Horn, <laughs> he fed him to uh, Terrence Crawford to make sure that he got that belt away from him before he left top rank. You know, but um, my my whole point is, I, I've said this before. I'll say it again: if the fighters want to fight other fighters, the fights can happen. If their promoter wants the fights to be made, the fight can happen. All of this, my man, I got this mandatory and this, that, and the other, and that's in the way. All, all of that is just scuttlebutt, you know, just, just, just nonsense, just, just excuses. I mean, the, the real, the real deal here is Tony Bellew doesn't even have any kind of title. So it, it, even that, well, unification Trump mandatory. Even that don't even come into play in this situation. Bellew doesn't have a title whatsoever. But yet and still, there's Usyk, who won those titles some months ago, came undisputed, doesn't have to face a single mandatory or mandatory before he puts those um, titles up on the line against against um, Tony Bellew. So, you know, and if the fight had been at heavyweight, I'd have had nothing to say about it because at heavyweight he couldn't defend his title. But the fight's actually at cruiserweight. So that, that excuse goes out the window. And uh, you know the reality is, once again, the consistency is not there when it comes to certain people. You know? And I, I'm just gonna end it on saying one more time. The man has all four major titles at Cruiserweight. I mean, let that sink in for just a moment. Anthony Joshua has three. And he can't find a way to make a fight to pick up the last title. I mean, we even see Gennady Golovkin had three titles. He found a way to bear to fight Canelo. Not one time, but two times. Although he ended up getting stripped the last time, but in all honesty, Canelo wasn't really stripped of that IBF title because he was fighting Canelo. He was stripped of that IBF title because instead of fighting his mandatory when the opening was there, when Canelo um, failed that t drug test and the fight got canceled, he elected to fight Vonis Martirogian, who hadn't fought in almost two years and never fought at middleweight. That that was basically the nail in the coffin for him as IBF titleist, and, and rightfully so. I mean, I feel like you know if um if that was his mandatory, he should have went ahead and took that fight if um uh, to get that mandatory out of the way because according to him, he wanted to be undisputed. But you know, I, I'm not gonna get too far into that. My whole point is, aside from that one issue, he'd still have his titles going into that Canelo fight, he still had all three titles. So, guys that have multiple titles can find ways to fight the guys they want to fight. It's only when it comes to Anthony Joshua fighting Deontay Wilder that you start to hear all this oh, my Sanction and Body gave us a 24-hour deadline to make a fight with the with the mandatory or with the mandatory. So, you know that said, guy, the guys, the guys are just hiding behind that excuse. 
And I'm not saying Anthony Joshua is the first one to do it, and I'm sure he won't be the last. And the reality is you can't force unification fights. Anthony Joshua can go his whole career, fight his mandatories, keep all three of his belts if he ends those fights, and never fight Deontay Wilder. No sanctioning body of, of the belts that he has will probably ever complain about it. That's not a that's not a requirement of a title holder to defend your title or to try to unify. And, and maybe that's something that the sanctioning bodies need to start looking into. Is, is your your guy should take a shot at unification? But unification don't exactly bode great for the uh, sanctioning bodies, you know, because it's hard for them to get the fee, get all those fees when they're having to wait on a guy to defend two, three other belts before he comes back around to their mandatory. So, and, and that's why a lot of times when a guy gets undisputed, the belts end up, you know, he only gets undisputed and he doesn't hold all them titles long because he pretty much winds up wanting to fight the best fights instead of fighting a bunch of mandatory. And sometimes it's because they don't want to fight the mandatory guy because they see him as too much of a threat. I mean, that happens too. You know, um, so, but but I'll say, I mean, look at Adonis Stevenson. He's WBC champion at a uh, light heavyweight. And later Alvarez was mandatory for like, for like two years, it seemed like. He never fought the guy. He somehow managed to hold on to his belt while fighting all these other people. So, if, if a, t- a title holder wants to make fights with other guys, they can do it. They just have to go through the go through the um steps, go through the process of doing of, of making their the sanctioning body. Basically, they have to go through the process of appeasing their sanctioning body when it comes to letting them know that hey, I want to do this. You're gonna get sanctioned fees off this fight. And I'm still going to come back and fight the mandatory that you have for me. And most of the time, the sanctioning body is happy because they're going to get another sanctioning fee. Anyway, which is all they really care about. They don't really care about these guys getting title shots. They really care about the sanctioning fee. But they also, to an extent, care about credibility. So they can't just leave some guy that high and dry. You know, like, eventually, whoever the WBC champion is at middleweight is going to have to defend against... Um, Charlo, and unless Charlo loses to someone else, and someone else is put in that mandatory spot, then then at that point they would have to defend against that person. But eventually it has to happen because the sanctioning body loses credibility if they just let some guy just stay out there, get hung out there, and never get a title shot. So, you know, I'm gonna close on that, and I'm just gonna say, you know, shout shout out to Usyk for becoming undisputed. A lot of respect for that. And uh, shout out to him for finding a way to make a fight with the guy that he actually wanted to make a fight with. And I want to see more of that in the sport of boxing. Stop hiding behind your banner trees. I'm out of here.